against apparent politics. Thank you very much. Well, I don't know how many of you had the chance to read this uh, white paper that came out on Thursday. You may have had the chance to read the foreword by Theresa May, which doesn't really attest to Tory education standards, as, as there are no actual verbs in the, in the so-called sentences. But what you might have picked up on is the declaration that the essential ingredient of our success, the strength and support of 65 million people willing us, willing us to make it happen. It being extreme Brexit. Because after all the division and discord, the country is coming together. Do you feel part of a national consensus on extreme Brexit? No! I thought not. I have suggested that Theresa May should be one of the people nominated for an Oscar for La La Land. And yet Theresa May wasted six months and loads of your money in fighting, in litigating through the courts, which then of course got dumped on by the Tory press, to resist parliamentary control of the Brexit process. What we should be doing in the next decade is investing in our country to try and address the grievances, the resentments, the problems that we understand that so many people have. I think even Leave voters are respecting a party that is clear where it stands. And I think there is absolutely every reason for us on a cross-party basis to hold to our principles. No one voted to come out of the single market and the customs union. That was not on the ballot paper. It is going to cause enormous, enormous damage to people's jobs because businesses depend on very complex supply chains. So do universities, by the way. You may not think of it like that. But all their academic exchanges rely on the freedom to trade in people, if you like, within the EU. And talking of free movement, it's a two-way street. And if you say we don't want free movement, you are ditching the aspirations of so many people, not only pensioners to go and live in a sunny clime and access the local health care. Some of them may not realise it's only thanks to the EU that they do that. But young people who are going to be denied the chance to live and study where they want. I think... In the next couple of years, people are going to wake up to the benefits that the EU has, got, has granted them. If we say that we don't want anything to do with EU law and the supervision of the European Court, that is going to completely kibosh our cooperation on crime, on exchanging data, and also in the whole area of civil justice, which is where you, let's say you have a car accident abroad and you want to get a judgment and then be able to enforce it for compensation or, or suing for damage. At the moment you can go to a court in the UK and get the Italian or French or Spanish court to enforce it. Well, you can kiss goodbye to that in the future yeah. if we're not part of EU so-called mutual recognition arrangements. Okay, it sounds like jargon. But what in reality it is, is benefits to people in their daily lives. The other thing promised by Theresa May is we're going to have a stronger, fairer Britain. <laughs> so she goes off and holds hands with Trump. <laughs> if you can't cooperate with your closest neighbours, how can you be effective in the world? It's through the EU that we are most effective in the world. Whether it's on security, whether it's on trade, whether it's on climate change, on addressing conflict and upholding human rights throughout the world. 
Give the people the final say on Brexit, as that poster says. If we believe in democracy, we believe in the people's right to have their say, the final say on whether they accept any deal negotiated by Theresa May or whether they want to stay in the EU. So there is everything to fight for. Thank you so much for coming. Thanks for inviting me today. Keep up your strength.